Statue of Liberty was a gift to the United States from the people of France to commemorate 100 years of Franco-American friendship. The statue was also known to commemorate the centennial of America's independence. The statue is formally known as Liberty Enlightening the World. This massive statue that was sculpted by Frederick Auguste Bartholdi was designed by French engineer Gustave Eiffel, who you might be familiar with for other famous constructions, and it is worth a fortune today. So, what's the worth of the Statue of Liberty? Well, if you want to know, then stay tuned, because this is exactly what we're going to be talking about in today's video. But before we dive in, give this video a like, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our new videos. The Statue of Liberty is a national symbol of the United States of America. She stands at a proud 151 feet tall and draws 4.5 million visitors each year, and is modeled after the Roman goddess Libertas. Her torch is actually a cleverly constructed replica of the original torch, acting as a welcome beacon for newcomers and a powerful symbol of patriotism for Americans. However, as the adage goes, freedom isn't free. According to the National Park Service, both Liberty and Ellis Islands are estimated to cost at least $6 million a year to preserve. Aside from upkeep costs, the Statue of Liberty and her island have undergone considerable modifications over the years, ranging from a four-year refurbishment in the 1980s to the May 2019 construction of a new and pricey Statue of Liberty Museum. Seems like a lot of effort to go through for an old statue, but as anybody who's ever stood on Lady Liberty's throne can confirm, there is just something special about her. So here's a look at the statue's history, including how much it cost to make her in the first place and how much it's worth now. So, as many people know, the Statue of Liberty was a gift from the people of France to the people of America. It serves as a reminder of the effort. Although Édouard de la Boulaye designed the statue, Auguste Bartholdi was the artist who actually commissioned to build it. La Boulaye's presence was twofold. On the surface, it was designed to honor the end of the American Civil War in a time of the country's centennial. Uh, still, it was also meant to embarrass French ruler Napoleon III's repressive rule practices. It took a lot of effort to build the statue as large as Lady Liberty. Even though the Statue of Liberty was created in over 300 pieces, the torch was the main puzzle. Bartholdi couldn't get it to like shine as brightly as the rest of the sculpture, composed of gleaming copper. The idea of adding gold to the flame was considered, but the funds were just unavailable. The massive statue was funded through donations entirely, and the statue would be paid for by the people of France and the people of America actually had to pay for the pedestal. But persuading people to contribute was not really a simple task. To promote the statue in France, the French-American Union was founded in 1875. They accepted payments from city governments, Parisian merchants, a copper business, even students, and the French government too. They declared in July 1880 that they had finally raised enough money to finish the statue. The total cost of the copper and steel monument was over 2 million francs, or about $400,000 at the time. The American Committee of the Statue of Liberty, just like the French-American Union, was established to generate funds for Lady Liberty's pedestal. They did, however, have more difficulties than the French, despite designing the smaller part. Americans were hesitant to support the statue, even after Bartholdi spent the centenary in the United States to promote it. The New York Times, for example, denounced the statue as a colossal waste of money and, and opposed spending any money on it. But Bartholdi was adamant about finishing his project. He spread the myth that the Statue of Liberty would be sent to Boston instead of the ungrateful New York in the early 1880s. And the ruse worked. New Yorkers stepped up the fundraising efforts and resistance to the plan dissipated. While Bartholdi is responsible for the statue, Francis Hopkinson Smith is responsible for the foundation. The 65-foot-tall base is shaped like an 11-pointed star. It stands atop an 89-foot pedestal, giving Lady Liberty a total complete height of 305 feet. By 1885, the United States still required $100,000 to complete the pedestal for the Statue of Liberty. So, poet Emma Lazarus and newspaper publisher Joseph Pulitzer, don't know if you ever heard of him, was responsible for the rest of the well-known fundraising endeavors. Lazarus wrote the poem The New Colossus for the statue, which eventually linked it to the theme of immigration. In part, it reads, Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Send these, the homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. The poem was later engraved on a plaque and then placed inside the pedestal. Pulitzer attracted money by offering to publish the names of all donors in the publication, The World. Over 160,000 people donated, raising $101,091 in an incredible turnout. And remember, inflation, that's more than it sounds like. A quarter million dollars was spent on the pedestal on which the Statue of Liberty stands. 
While the American Committee for the Statue of Liberty gathered $150,000, the pedestal was largely completed thanks to Joseph Pulitzer's efforts. In 19th century money, the Statue of Liberty and her pedestal cost a stunning $650,000. The Statue of Liberty's coppery light texture has faded to green by the early 1900s, but she was no less spectacular as a result of this. Visitors can climb down a staircase, sit at the top of the torch, or they can crawl up a ladder to see her face from within. Fortunately, Lady Liberty didn't fare well during World War I. See, in 1916, a German plot on Black Palm Island, less than a mile from Liberty Island, triggered a series of explosions, and these explosions cost $100,000 in damage to Miss Liberty and the torch was never opened to the public again. President Ronald Reagan established the Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Commission in 1982 to restore the Statue of Liberty. The goal here was to generate enough money to rebuild both the Statue of Liberty and the historic structures on Ellis Island. Lady Liberty's well-regarded status as the woman who welcomes immigrants to America is partly due to Ellis Island. The statue was the first thing 17 million deportees saw when they arrived in the United States between 1943 and 1954. Scaffolding was placed around the statue in 1984, much like when it was built. That, that was done so they could repair holes, uh, strip paint, and replace corroded bars. Uh, just, you know, various little maintenance tasks assigned to the workers. However, the most significant renovation was the complete replacement of the torch. After removing the original 16-foot, 3,600-pound torch, which would be displayed inside the pedestal, production of a duplicate began. The replacement torch was created to resemble Bartholdi's original, with the addition of a 24-karat gold leaf gilding, which Bartholdi couldn't afford. The renovations of the Statue of Liberty and her torch were anticipated to cost $39 million, which is almost $96 million in today's money. The restorations on Ellis Island, on the other hand, cost about $130 million. Or, or that's $321 million in today's money, anyways. Lady Liberty was shuttered for 100 days after the World Trade Center attacks, and about one mile northeast of the statue. Furthermore, the pedestal and the crown were both inaccessible to the public until 2004, and then again in 2009. There were lots of closures in the years after 9-11. The National Park Service closed the statue in late 2011 for safety reasons. And then came Hurricane Sandy in 2012 which shut down Liberty Island for nine entire months. Plans for renovating Liberty Island began to take root after a depressing decade of closures. The National Park Service had been forced to limit the number of visitors to the statue since the 9-11 attacks. The Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Foundation offered a new plan to address this, a Statue of Liberty Museum, apart from the statue and the pedestal. It took about five years to make this museum, and it was developed by architects FX Collaborative, and the exhibition design was done by ESI Design. New Yorkers keenly anticipated opening day in 2019. Uh, they lined up to see the history, and a total of 26,000 square feet of history can be found at the museum. Visitors can see a film on the statue's creation on curved panorama screens as part of the immersive experience. They can also see the original torch of Lady Liberty, which was previously preserved in the statue's pedestal, but now it's the museum's headline attraction. The Statue of Liberty Museum goes well above and beyond the statue's apparent value. Americans have viewed it as a, a symbol of freedom and American principles for decades now, but it is so much more than that. The museum aims to show how the monument came to be in the first place, a symbol of freedom and, and truly liberty for all, as well as serving as a light for immigrants seeking their version of the American dream. The museum now offers audio tours in 12 different languages to complement this message. According to Fortune, the Statue of Liberty Museum is expected to have costed more than $70 million. The overall cost of building the monument and pedestal, and then refurbishing them in the 1980s, and then establishing a separate museum in 2019, is about $110 million. However, this is likely a fraction of the full cost, given that annual upkeep costs around $6 million, like I said which doesn't even include the cost of repairs following 9-11 and, and then Hurricane Sandy. So, after more than a century of conserving her beauty, the people of New York appear to be willing to pay any price for their Lady Liberty. So, what's the worth of this statue today? This statue is estimated to be worth over $300 million today. Now, that's, that's pretty massive, right? Yeah, yeah, to Americans, this statue is priceless though, which means that we ain't letting it go for any amount. And that's going to be all for today's video. So I really sincerely thank you guys for watching. And if you did enjoy it and it's not too much trouble, maybe give a like and subscribe to our videos and then smack that bell icon so you get notified when we post new videos. Later.